Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Scorpio, we're going to see what the next big thing is for you. That thing could be a cycle. It could be a person. It could be a place in time. It could be an achievement. It could be good. It could be bad. We just don't know. Um, I'm going to look into the Shadows of the Middle Ages Oracle deck to get started with you on this. And then we're going to go into a Murder of Crows tarot deck. So Scorpio, let's see. What is the next big thing? For Scorpio, the next big thing for Scorpio. A camel woman. <laughs> Kidding. So, if some of you have any exotic animals, um, if you live kind of like where I am, that would be considered an exotic animal. Or, oh my gosh. Oh, that's strange. Okay, but let me finish my sentence. Oh, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Okay. <laughs> so, or you could live somewhere where camels are part of the natural habitat. It could be a woman who owns camels. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, anyways, I might look into the book on these ones. Um, the camel represents balance, too. Actually, this camel is really beautiful. I like the way this camel is really decked out here. It looks just the cloth on the camel looks so soft. Looks like somebody really loves this camel. Brushed him all out. Brushed him and her or her all out. So here's the thing. I sat down. I turned the camera on to do your reading. And um, literally just like seconds after I turned the camera on, a song came in for me. And I thought, that's weird. Did I hear that song recently? I'm like, no, I haven't been playing the radio or anything. <laughs> So I don't even know if this song, because the the singer, the musician is Canadian. He had some hits outside of Canada. I think this was a song known out of Canada. It's You're a Strange Animal by Gowan. I was like, oh, that's really different. It's really, oh my God, but right? The camel woman is an exotic animal, a different, something unusual. The camel woman. So what did the underline? You're pulling out a completely different energy than everybody. The crossroad. Pisces crossroad. Okay, this could be something that you encounter, wait, but it's underlying. This is something to do with Pisces season, or could this person be a Pisces? And you're going to meet this person at a crossroads. Or if you find your life at a crossroads, I always find Pisces is very dualistic too. With the double fish energy. Okay, okay, okay. So, the camel. I want to look this up. I don't, I've never, I don't think I've ever pulled out the camel in this um, this deck. You know, I like, there's something about this camel that almost feels sort of like biblical. Like a wise man or someone would have been on this camel. It just looks so fine. Just really, looks really nice. Okay. The camel card represents endurance, resourcefulness, and adaptability. It signifies the ability to navigate through challenges and difficult situations with resilience and grace. This card suggests that you have the inner strength and determination to overcome obstacles and reach your destination, even in harsh or unfamiliar circumstances. It encourages you to trust in your ability to adapt, persevere, and find innovative solutions to any difficulties that arrive, arise. The camel embodies endurance, persistence, and resilience. It can also symbolize the ability to find a way out of an unimaginable deadlock. Ah, well, what is this? What is this crossroads? That kind of feels like it's a deadlock. Which way do I go? I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. Pisces, Pisces. Is this something going on between you and a Pisces? A deadlock? Um, I don't know. Well... I'm not sure what this underline is. I'll understand more later. But, you know, whatever's happening in your life right now or whatever is going to be happening in your life, I feel like you're going to get through it, like, honestly, very courageously, with a lot of grace and resilience. Um, I like this woman is smiling. She like this. I don't know that there's something coming for you that's difficult. It does just... This card feels, both of them feel very peaceful. There's a sense of, you want to say, like Taurus energy with this too. Like, it's just like soft blankets and like um, chenille fabric. Like, it's just got a real, and she's just smiling. It's nice. It's great. Isn't it funny? Like, it looks very graceful. 
You're going to be very graceful. It's your next big thing. Scorpio, very graceful. Have you been at a crossroads with a Pisces? You know, Pisces, it's interesting because Pisces, like, talks about the 12th house is a pretty difficult house, if that's even, like, what we're kind of talking about. What is this book? I mean, it talks about imprisonment. It talks about, uh, it it's, represents, I shouldn't say it talks about, it represents. Pisces is a water sign known for its intuitive, compassionate, and imaginative nature. Individuals born under this sign are often described as sensitive, dreamy, and empathetic. They possess emotional depth and are highly attuned to the emotions and needs of others. Pisceans are often creative and artistic with a vivid imagination that allows them to explore the realms of fantasy and spirituality. This water sign should remember that problems can't be solved by swimming away. Any relationship with mystical Pisces is guaranteed to involve deep spiritual explanation. Ex interesting. Uh, expl it's exploration, but explanation tried to come out of my mouth. And the crossroad. No, you're not coming on my table. I love you. Yes. No. You're all wet. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't act like you're not trying to do it either. Uh, crossroad. 22. To me, this is, you know, a decision to make. The crossroad, yes, represents choices, decisions, and opportunities for change. It symbolizes a moment of significant divergence or a crucial crossroads in your life. The crossroad card indicates that you have reached a point where you must make a decision. Wow, that will impact your future direction. Now, okay, this is what you've done in the past. You may have found yourself in um, an illusionary cycle as well, and that was causing a crossroads for you. You may have felt... Um, I don't know, imprisoned or trapped in some type of a cycle. But whatever decision you made was going to have a major impact. This is also kind of giving me the feeling of like um, the star in judgment. You know, like it's it's significant. It's a very significant occurrence in your life and you have to make a decision. Uh, it encourages you to consider your options carefully, weigh the potential outcomes and follow the path that aligns with your true desires and aspirations. There are multiple paths that lead to the desired goal. Gather information and thoroughly study each path in order to choose the right way. So this is where you've been. And, okay, if we're going through a crossroads with the 12th house, that's pretty difficult. I would say that's pretty difficult. Um, so it kind of makes sense to me. Maybe you're still in this. Maybe you're coming out of the tunnel. Maybe you've made a decision and you've chosen your tunnel here. And you're coming out of it. So, yeah, it doesn't, feels like you're coming out of a tunnel. And you're um, you're graceful. And maybe you're connecting with your womanly side, whether you're masculine or feminine. Could be someone who's coming towards you, but I don't know. Let's see the woman here. I think it's kind of explanatory, self-explanatory. But um, the woman card represents an adult female persona. It symbolizes femininity maturity and nurturing qualities. The woman card often signifies the presence of a significant woman in the Corinth's life, such as a mother, sister, friend, or mentor. It can also represent the Corinth themselves if she identifies as female. Depending on the context and surrounding cards, the woman card can provide insights into relationships, personal qualities, and aspects of femininity and feminine energy. Well, hello, so that's what this is. The camel is talking about what that is there. So yeah, you persevere, you're, um, you're graceful, and <laughs> I'm telling you, this camel looks great. I mean, because I, some of the videos you see of camels, they can be quite, quite outright ornery. <laughs> it's like, ah, ah. <laughs> no, not you, not today. <laughs> Scorpio, <laughs> not today. You're, you're graceful, you're nice, it's nice. Oh, it's nice energy. Well, that's a nice change. I don't know. I did, um, I'm getting some crazy energies in these readings lately. I was actually got to the point, I think I had mentioned it in one of them. I thought, I'm going to pull cards for myself. Is something going on that I'm not aware of? Because um, everything was okay on my end. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to keep reading these cards. And then the funny thing was, um, my Leo girlfriend came by yesterday and she got me that. Do you see that? 
it's a selenite crystal ball and it sits on a little light and she said i got it for you because it protects against uh, all, all sorts of stuff she talked about obviously like that a lot of us know too right and um and then she said yeah and one of the things she mentioned was um you know negative or evil energies i said oh this is good because i feel like I'm, there's something coming through in the readings lately so that's got my back now that's got my back so if anybody was sending any, any evil eye well larry tried to take care of that too <laughs> larry's because a little monster he's out there in the snow okay let's learn more about the camel which feels like the journey the journey a long journey um of great perseverance and you do come out in it quite gracefully because the card beside it is kind of saying, well, what is this persona? Oh, it's really wonderful. Don't do it. Okay, come and say hi. You just want to look out the window. He wants to see his, no, and you're not going to sit on my cards all wet. No, no, no. <laughs> he just wants to look out the window to see his tent area from this perspective. <laughs> the fuffer. And where are you going now? Yeah, you can go on that chair. Why don't you do that? That's a great idea. Okay. There you go, Larry. I, and you were on here in the night. There's catnip flakes. There's catnip flakes on my table. Okay. Camel. Six of Pentacles. Seven of Wands. Eight of Cups. Wow. Well, this is a, I don't know. It feels like a journey where a lot was needed of you or required of you um, and got perhaps, I don't know, something taken from you. Because with the Seven of Wands and the Eight of Cups, that almost feels like, well, you don't have much left. Which is sort of interesting because you think of the camel like is uh, like evolutionarily adapt, adapted to be able to go through long journeys in the desert. And right, the hump, I mean, it doesn't hold water, but it holds, I believe it's a lot of fat and fat does have a high water content. So basically, right, to allow it to get through the desert, because this is like no access to water with the Eight of Cups. So you have the Six of Pentacles, the Seven of Wands, and the Eight of Cups so far in that. All right, um, the woman, the Ten of Swords, the Six of Cups, and the Eight of Pentacles. Well, geez. This is a journey. This is a journey through the desert. Because there's no access to water. There's a lot that that is required and asked of you that you need to kind of like utilize, share. Uh, it could have been people, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm honestly not picking up on people here. Well, I mean, unless this is someone coming towards you, okay? If this is someone coming towards you, if you're masculine, maybe that is the case. For you um this could be a feminine energy coming towards you and i just say i know like about 80 85 percent of the people coming to my readings are, are um women female but um so anyways i do feel like okay if if you're the the woman the woman in this this reading um this is kind of like your story so and I, I i don't know why so is this maybe if you're still sort of like going through I feel like you're so close to getting out of this tunnel though by what's on the table. So you all are going to be slightly different on what your timeline is for this, right? Like nobody's life is um, an exact blueprint of another person's life. So I'm just picking up the energy and see where you kind of flow and fit into this. But um, this woman energy is very much being... I, the best way I would describe this is this journey through the desert is almost like the universe has somehow treated you in a way through circumstances like a drill sergeant would or somebody who's, um, you know, gone into the uh, or wanted to become like a Navy SEAL or something like that. Like, what is the first thing that they're going to do? They're going to um, rip you apart. <laughs> they're going to rip you or they're going to rip your ego and your identity apart to rebuild it. Right. And it is painful. And and in a lot of that, it's. um well, it's curious, right? I mean, I've not ever done anything like that before, but I would assume that it is done in a way that is both uh, pushes and activates buttons within a person that either causes them to completely curl up and crawl away and get out of the situation 
um, or like find something inside themselves that would have otherwise never been found and build on that, make that the new foundation to build. Because I'm sure there's people that just come out of, you know, trying to join the Navy SEALs and that's like, no, it's not for me. I'm going to maintain the uh, who I am. And that's not to say that's right or wrong. It's just, that's their path. That's probably what they're meant to do in this lifetime. But when I see the 10 of swords come out in a situation like this, like the woman is 10 of swords, six of cups, eight of pentacles. Oh my gosh, this is uh, perhaps probably not recognizing yourself on the other side of this experience. And it's uh, with the Eight of Pentacles, uh, I really want to put like this is self-work and self-mastery. Look at the mirror too. It's almost like trying to understand who one is. I mean, this is your next big thing. This is, I think this is amazing. This is an amazing reading. <laughs> all the ones, they're all, they've all been interesting. But this one, I want to say kudos, Scorpio. Um, I mean, you are death and rebirth. So there's the painful death part. And in that is like finding your identity. Who are you? But it, it, you know, going through something like a serious life struggle is where you start to find that. Yeah. The fool's at the bottom. Well, okay, that's nice. I want to put card underneath. So I end up with six on each side here. This was like a test, but some sort of spiritual test that you've been through. Hmm. You are switching. Well, you quickly kind of move through in this woman energy, you quickly kind of move through um, archetypes. You go from Queen of Swords at the Six of Cups point, which is where this is like looking in the mirror. So I want to say, too, it's like, well, the camel doesn't come out of the desert looking like that. There's no way, right, on a long, hard journey. This is the camel has been having a spa day. This camel has totally had a spa day. Um, so say that. The camel has really had a spa day in that image. But this is not a spa day. This is not a spa day. And the Two of Swords is under it. It's hard to know what to do. Or what your next steps are, possibly when you don't even know who you are anymore with that Ten of Swords. And then the Six of Cups and the Queen of Swords, that I want to say is taking sort of a hard discerning look in the mirror. But in this mirror, also because the Six of Cups speaks of the past, it could be like understanding who you have been leading up to who you are now. And it might even be some sort of like final self-reflection and um, bidding or what to that energy. And then you get the Eight of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. Like that, that's it's just like incredibly um, masterful in, in terms of your physical, your physical world. Um, how you nurture that it is it is actually slipping into a very nurturing energy after a very difficult energy it's a pretty well I, I kind of want to say every Scorpio I've ever met um oh you got me dearie you're such a good boy you're so handsome yeah there he is um so every Scorpio I've ever met has always surprised me at their, um, what is the word you would use, like their energy and how quickly they can recover it. 
I mean, I'm an Aries and I'm pretty energetic. And I always thought that was like an epitome of energy till I ran into Scorpios. I'm like, why the it's going to be wrong. I'm done. I'm done. You can keep going. Or like it is, it's like there's that, that rebirth energy is very strong in you. And um, you got it here. I'll tell you that. You definitely have it here. And this is the energy of like, you can kind of knock Scorpio down, but you certainly can't keep them down. And I, I want to say too, though, um, whoever I'm picking up on, like this isn't someone who's been knocked down and gets up again and is like raging at the world and screw everybody and I'm going to be the meanest, biggest, baddest biatch, whatever. Is it not? And I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of, maybe that's where this Six of Cups with the Queen of Swords is in here. I don't know. It could even be a choice about some people in your life and thinking, you know what? If I want to maintain a level of grace, I mean, I would say that, yeah, the Queen of Pentacles with the Eight of Pentacles would be um, a level of grace here. That there might be some things that, you know, need to be out. You may also be completing the cycle where you've been quite critical and discerning of what's in your life and making decisions. Right? Because that goes from the two. It goes from the two of swords to the queen of swords. I want to say, too, it's focusing on what's real around you. Now, okay. So I feel like the woman card is representing, like, sort of how you end up in, in a journey. The camel is the journey and the camel looks like because it ends with the justice card and it's sitting right under the eight of cups. It, it just, the minute that card came out like that, it looked to me like a spiritual test. Um, the six of pentacles with the three of cups. The Seven of Wands with the Five of Cups. I mean, and then the Eight of Cups with Justice. That, that, that right, the, it's like it ends in you coming out of the desert with Justice card. But in the desert, I don't know. I feel like there's been something around you that's wanted. Like, I'm almost looking at this camel, almost a bit like a cow, like an udder, and having, like, others feeding somehow off of or what you need to go through the desert or what you needed to get through this desert, the desert, the crossroads. The Seven of Wands and the Five of Cups. So... This to me, because of where you end up, makes me feel like you are naturally an open, jovial, yeah, an open, jovial um, person, open to experience. I think there's, I don't know, I just feel like though that there's people from your past here, or, right? And you do some sort of reflection about the past and you're pretty much done with it here. You're done with something from your past. Maybe it's just this crossroads and this journey. And you're taking a step forward. And you're just doing it so gracefully. I mean, it really is highlighted here about that. Oh, Gowan just came in again. You're a strange animal. That's what I know. <laughs> Follow. I feel like there's something in the lyrics that are relevant to you. I also feel like my camera's crooked. <laughs> the Seven of Wands, the Queen of Cups. It's just very distracting. It's in my head, so it's coming out my mouth. That's how it works when I'm doing this. So, the Seven of Wands, the Queen of Cups, and the Two of Cups. Well, why is this? Oh, sorry. 
Seven of Wands, Seven of Swords. You already have the Seven of Wands on the table. Seven of Swords, Queen of Cups, and Two of Cups. Uh, there's uh, the crossroads. There's something about not facing or hiding. Love, hiding love. But that feels like the camel. Hiding love? I don't know. Because the Queen of Cups and the Two of Cups is a really beautiful energy. It would be, you would think. This is like people that love each other, people that have equal emotional um, expression with one another. They're on an equal playing field with that. But the Seven of Swords, something is hidden here. It could, I mean, it could be, it could be you even hiding yourself until you find, because something here is not right in this journey. So let's, let's clarify. But it looks like you're through this journey. The Justice card at the end, really. It's kind of like anything that needed to be rectified through the desert for you is done. So your camel. Four of Pentacles and the star. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's very biblical. <laughs> this just said it looked like, like you'd be a wise, like a wise man journeying to something here. The birth journeying to the birth but i think it's like it's your birth but following the north star following your destiny but why is the four pentacles here stuck oh it's stuck it's stuck at the crossroads okay what's the crossroads what's at the crossroads why are you stuck at the crossroads the seven of swords well, what's this hiding shit So the emotion, the emotion is the part that gets lost in the journey, but that's the part that keeps you at the crossroads. When you lose your emotional, um, when you lose emotional context, when you lose emotional direction, when you lose emotional expression. Interesting. So six of, okay, six of pentacles and the three of cups. Okay, look at this. The five of pentacles. I'm telling you, this is like some type of an energy that you can't give enough to it. It'll just keep taking from you to the point where you have nothing left to give. The seven of wands and the five of cups. The sun. <laughs> The sun, the seven of wands and the five of cups, the desert, the heat of the sun. I don't know if it's just very sort of symbolic, but the sun is usually a very positive card. So let's see, well, how does this end up with the eight of cups and justice? The lovers, the king of cups and the ace of wands. Well, there's the water. There's the introduction of the water. There's um, there's your important choice to make. A significant choice to make. It's going to change the course of your life. But you introduce emotions. When emotions are not introduced, you continue to journey through the desert. I don't know, because the Five of Cups is here, I feel like that there's something about negative emotions, right? You're, you're getting away from something here where others or another, it just honestly looks like celebrating on your behalf or at your expense. It could be financial, but even energetically, so it could be hard to see the positive. And then woman, but this is, yeah, woman. The page of pentacles. 
the woman child, the woman with child. Well, I kind of want to say it could like um, childlike, just exploring life, curiosity, openness to adventure, experience, learning. The Ten of Swords and the Two of Swords. The Five of Wands and the Knight of Cups. Well, you've got the emotions, but there seems to be um, some, like, okay. The five of wands and ten. I don't know. I feel like I'm not gonna say anything till I pull everything out. I want to see how this ends up. So the six of cups and the queen of swords. The Eight of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. Okay, right? So this is taking an approach towards something. And then you, you kind of, you shift the energy you're using once you get there. Because, right, that's, now we go to Eight of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles. And there's also mastering. So you've mastered the discerning, um, cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> Queen of Swords. Anyway, she's earned that. Um, strength and karma, which is also strength and judgment. The courage to start again. Just, oh man, that's okay. can see why the Page of Pentacles is there. Okay. You're not, um, let's just say, there's something here about feeling like, there's something about your emotions, like sharing them. That you're either conflicted about doing that or you find yourself in a conflictive situation so you won't you won't share your emotions because after that area with the ten of swords and the two of swords there's no emotions there's a six of cups but that almost feels like like looking at your emotions from sort of like um a critical viewpoint with the Queen of Swords twice and the Eight of Pentacles. You're gonna, so, okay. You're gonna nurture. How would I say this? You're going to nurture probably through love, but not I don't know, because this Knight of Cups doesn't seem like it moves forward. And right, you have the Strength card. There's a part of you that is still held back. And possibly maybe because you're judging situations around you with the Judgment card. Now, what is this little pile? Seven of Swords, Queen of Cups, Two of Cups. Why is the Seven of Swords here? That was the crossroads. Oh, do you do you express feelings? I don't know, maybe. The Ten of Wands and the Ten of Cups. Hey, the Queen of Cups. The Chariot, Justice. But there's more to that. What else came out? The Knight of Swords and the Moon. The Two of Cups. The Two of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles. That's feeling juggled. That's odd. That's odd energy to come into an emotional relationship. The Two of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles? There might have been a relationship here that you were in or, you know, a group dynamic. So it could have been like a romantic relationship with children and it's just or just like outside family members or some type of community where you hide. 
or you you get away from this possibly because you met with a chariot and but the weight of this is pretty heavy with the ten of wands again see that's the six of pentacles three of cups five of pentacles it's like you keep giving to something from your past here or a group or a person and it just takes until there's nothing left of you to give You follow, you you make some sort of, or you've made, because this is probably, I want to say past, because it's underlined. You've made some sort of decision here based on your heart, possibly sharing it, expressing it, um, whether that was good or bad, whatever you had to express, and that moves you forward. And it actually, though, it moves you quite quickly into the unknown with the moon. And maybe that's the point of the desert. But this two of cups with the two of pentacles and seven of pentacles, I would be like, yeah, I could see why you would, if this is about relationships or people that you've been dealing with, I mean, that is really, I don't know, are people juggling you? Are people trying to make a choice? Or have you tried to make a choice? It's, and But the seven of pentacles to me is just saying, you know what, there needs to be a better choice. <laughs> this is not working. Well, that's a really interesting reading, Scorpio. So, okay, to sort of cap this off, if I was to answer the question that we're supposed to answer in this reading, um, sort of like the Coles Notes version here, I would say that the next big thing for you is honestly, it's I feel like it's the conclusion of some sort of long cycle that you've been in. You've been at some sort of crossroads in this cycle to express yourself now it feels like you're meant to be following your sort of your destiny what's the next thing that's really honestly meant for you but you can't follow that you can't open up that pathway if you're hiding how you feel about things i it, it gives me the impression that you i don't know you express yourself or you start expressing yourself and that puts you on the journey. I, I'm kind of wondering if some of you, if this is, I don't want to say a negative expression, but maybe you had some like heavier feelings with the Ten of Wands and the Ten of Cups that you just needed to say. I mean, the Queen of Cups is going to tell you how she feels. But then you don't tell anymore. You just keep it to yourself. And that actually becomes justice. So I do feel like there's some sort of a purge. And perhaps that's also how maybe you maintain grace and dignity in uh, a long and trying period in your life. So you're coming out on the other side here with grace and dignity. You've kind of been um, reformed and rebirthed. And I do see you um, like just, I guess, in life and maybe even in work as um continuing to hold this grace and dignity i mean she's just like very dignified the way she's holding herself very dignified but not not expressing your emotions i mean that's that's interesting so the we end with this yeah, the Seven of Cups at the bottom, just the seven. Ooh, that's that Piscean energy, I feel like. But no, it's not, is it? Um, five, six, and seven are Scorpio. And you have all three of them on the table here. Your minor arcana. And that is the choices that you make. <laughs> wow. The choices that you make. Yeah, I feel like you've been going through, um, like, significant, a significant trial. And you come out gracefully. So it's just the, the extended, I'm going to ask, what is the blessing? What is the blessing in this? And what is the challenge? <laughs> Interesting. So there you go. Well, good for you, Scorpio. Thank you so much, my friends. Until next time, be gentle with yourselves. Bye.